Hey everyone, today I'm going to demonstrate Octoparse. Octoparse is a very efficient web scraping system, in my opinion, one of the best, that allows for very quick and dynamic content extraction. It offers a 14 day trial for both the basic and professional versions, and if you are interested in this offer, I'll leave the link here in the description below and pinned in the comment as well. You can create your account there. Well, you will download Octoparse and install it. When you install it, it will open a screen like this. Here I have a professional trial version, and on this home screen, it will show some templates. These templates here are pre-made flows, pre-programmed for you to use that you can easily access and utilize. So, for example, I want to extract contacts from Google Maps or perform a more advanced extraction, or Airbnb by keyword, YouTube comments, and so on. Here in the templates section, they are categorized. My experience with the templates is as follows. Some of them are good, others do not work so well. So, it's up to you to check if some are paid, and if they will meet your expectations. I will give an example manually here as an example. When you go to the home page, you have a search bar where you can simply and easily search for various templates or URLs. So here, I'm going to go back to the browser. I left the Amazon site open, searched for Kindle, and now I'm going to extract the information from this Kindle page. I click on Start, and it will automatically load the page and detect the elements on that page. In general, it will already be able to perform a good part of the normal extraction that would already be done. So it detects, creates a flow, a loop. It's because there is pagination here, so it has already detected all the various elements it can bring, such as the page link, image, title, price, etc. Here you can paginate to more pages, you can move to the next page, so you check here, and it has already managed to get the next page. You can also edit the scroll page, specifying exactly how many times it will scroll, because some sites need additional scrolling to completely load all the information. It simulates as if you were scrolling, and it's generally safer to leave it enabled. You create the flow. When you create the flow, it will automatically do this for you. What is important here? For the URL, we are loading one URL. You also have the option to load a URL in the flow in a loop. So, if you come here and set up a loop, you can put this URL in here, load the main URL so you can test it, but you can put it here. Look, load URLs in the loop, and then, since the loop hasn't been created yet, you have to either add it manually, import it from a file, or from a previous task, or you can also create a batch here based on the parameters. Well, once that's done, you can even bring this flow over here. In our example, it's just one page, and it's just this Kindle link. You will need a loop first. It will handle pagination, perform the scroll, and this loop here is the loop of the elements. So, it is extracting each element here. It will perform the extraction, and then this element will run here to do the extraction, and here you can customize. For example, bringing up the link here, let's just suppose you didn't want anything that had paper white. Then you can simply come here to Options, Trigger, and then you can easily create a trigger right here to remove rows. And then, if the link contains paper white, it will delete the line, or it will stop the loop, or it will stop the extraction. So, once that's done here, it appears here, but when it actually extracts, I'll leave it here as is, it will eliminate these lines here where it says paper white. You can easily change the name here as well, and you can create various types of different customizable columns. So, for example here, let's suppose I want to get the source of the entirety of the HTML web page, then it will bring it right here. And based on this information, you can then clean the data right here and subsequently filter it according to exactly what you want. So let's suppose 
I actually intend to make a match to get this dingo right here. Then you can select this information here, where there is a date and such, come here and match it to a regular expression. And then, when you make this match here, you can create the expression here in an easier way, starting with this and ending with these double quotes here, in a more detailed manner, step by step, to ensure accuracy and clarity. Once that's done, click Apply. It creates the regular expression manually and captures the word between those two elements. So, when you click Apply here, it will bring all this information, right? Of course, here it is the same information, but in a scenario where you have different information, you would be able to bring that data here. Another thing you want, for example, to get the date you captured. So you can bring it here. Current date time. If you want, for example, the original URL where this information came from, you can bring it here as well. So, once that's done, you have some settings. These settings here allow you to deactivate task split, which is the division of tasks into subtasks to increase extraction speed. In the settings, you can also deactivate image loading to scrape faster and block ads and options. It's good to keep this automatic pagination completion checked. And then there are other settings here. Some sites, for example, will have issues with origin, so you can change the access origin. You can have anti-blocking techniques here. For example, you can access with a proxy, a paid proxy from a specific location, and it also gives you a test credit here. You can change the browser agent, and you can delete cookies. It is comprehensive in what it allows. Here, the automation as well. You can easily create and schedule the extraction. Well, once that's done, you can simply create a group or leave it in the default group, then you give it a name, save it, and you're done. When you go to run to execute, you will notice that it will ask you if you want to run it on your device or in the cloud. The professional version enables a boost mode for large-scale operations, dividing tasks across multiple servers and running them simultaneously. The professional version uses 20 servers, while this one runs on your own machine. If you run it in the cloud, it only enables the standard mode. It will enter a waiting state and soon start extracting data according to the settings we predetermined. So, for example, it will have to bring all this data here, including various types of information from different sources, and ensuring that only the relevant and necessary data is retained, eliminating anything that is paper white. Let me just check here to see if maybe all the links here are with paper white. Let's see if they are not, just to be sure and confirm. Let me just disable this so I can test it. It usually causes a few more slight problems like this, so we'll have to keep testing to identify them. In the local module, you can see here, look, it gave an error on the page it is loading. So, that's why it didn't extract. So, we can clearly see here that it's obviously an error in the link. So, let's try to understand the reason why. There is something wrong with this link here, and it seems to be causing some issues. Let's get it again by following the proper steps. Maybe it was something specific that went wrong. Here, you can even remove the one from the weapon if needed, but I think only this particular method works here. Save the changes, and let's put it again to see if it resolves the issue. Run the process once more. It is not accepting the link, probably due to some limitation of O that we need to investigate further. This limitation might be related to the system's capacity or a specific restriction in the software. Yes, you are right about how it's the process of data extraction from Octoparse. I can presume it is probably blocking. Let me run one more test here. I'll enable the... It's right here again.
Here I am doing a test. I paused here. That's right. I enabled a proxy from Brazil because this Amazon here is Brazilian. So now it is using the Brazil proxy to be able to access. Let's see if it will be able to extract. It did the scroll. Go back there. And then yes, it managed to extract as we want. And notice that here, look, it will probably bring the paper white. So for example, look, Amazon has ads. So if you don't want to bring the ad, you can remove everything that has SSPA. So let's pause here. Let's remove it. Here in extract data, you can come here and remove lines again. I will add another condition where the URL contains paper white and the URL contains spa. For example, additionally, you can use other conditions to filter out unwanted data. Moreover, this method ensures that only relevant information is extracted, making the process more efficient and accurate. So he will delete these two lines. I will save and run it again. Uh, yes, let me just show you right here. Just a moment. Let me show you. I went to settings, anti-blocking, and set the proxy to Brazil. So there is this limitation in the case of Octoparse. You can definitely use those premium proxies, or you can also try your own proxy. It's a bit more advanced, but it works as well. Here we have to wait. It's running. Here you can see a log of the execution. Here you can clearly see it executing in real time. Then it has a specific amount of time that you can configure for it to wait before proceeding. It would indeed be a page loading time. It's quite long, but it's always important to leave some additional time. Later, I will show where I did the here he is doing extraction and notice that he is not bringing those SSBA plus links, which were ad links. And he is also not bringing anything with paper white. So we see that it worked. Then he goes, everything that has the word, he will already eliminate. He eliminated the SSBA and such and so forth. So occasionally there is some variation of the word, something or other that he will execute here. Then you just need to make adjustments to it and it will definitely work. So it's a space character or a dash or hyphen or something like that. The most important thing here is this waiting before action, which is two crucial seconds. These two crucial seconds, he does the loop. He performs the loop of extracting all the elements. Here he does the scroll. There is no waiting period. And here there is also a waiting period. So when he enters the page, he waits approximately three seconds. Three seconds is ideally recommended because if you don't set it, something might get missed since it goes too fast. You can even make it wait for an element on the page. I want to wait for this element to load. It won't proceed until it loads. Good idea to set it to three seconds here. In the loop, it's also important to set it to one or two seconds. So I usually set it to one or two seconds. It's enough, but you have to test to see if it works. Another thing to note, sometimes the site requires a login for additional security measures, which is essential for accessing various features and functionalities. This way you can browse the site and set it up to log in just as if you were a regular user who logs in frequently. And then here, when you log into the system, you can come here afterwards and select the option, use cookies from the settings menu, and it will show the option clearly on the screen. After you log in successfully, you can set the pages cookie here to save your login information securely. And then the next time it loads, it will already be logged in automatically. All right. This means you won't have to log in again manually, making the process much more convenient and efficient for you. And then you can deactivate the browser and it will consider what the website has like choppy and some others that they don't accept. It's very difficult. They have a protection system. So to wrap up here, after you complete the task, it keeps the results here. Something I forgot to show is when you do the process on Amazon, it's quite annoying regarding the cache. So you have to keep trying and such, but you get the logic, right? When you do the extraction, you can also define what your key is. For example, you can specify the exact key you need. So anything with the same URL, I will disregard, for example. So he just goes and doesn't consider it. He doesn't bring that information. He doesn't replace it. So when you run it again, if there's just one more URL, it will show up here at 96. In all data, 
you have cloud backup, which you can send to the cloud itself, which would be here when it is running. Here it stays in a folder on your computer. And you can also do an export data, such as exporting to a different format. You can export this to Excel, CSV, Sheets, SQL Server, or MySQL. They offer more. Then you can also easily integrate with Zapier and other tools, such as Slack and Trello, efficiently. The interesting thing here is that later on in RPA, which is another product developed by our dedicated team, you can obtain the results, for example, of an extraction and perform the extraction and then consume this data as well, even via API, which stands for Application Programming Interface. This process is highly efficient, providing seamless integration into your existing workflows. So, if you come here, Task ID API, you can do it in the documentation, get the results of this via API. So, there are many ways you can work on this. And that's it. If you liked Octoparse and want to try it, use the link for more details. I will leave it in the description. Thank you very much.